Today we have with us Victor Komsonov from International Federation of Peace and Conciliation. Victor, good to have you with us after 28 years in India. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to meet with you here in these days when we just had a very interesting international conference of the peace movements of BRICS countries. Now that is the specific context with which we wanted to engage with you. Uh, Russia has really come back to the international stage really after about 10-15 years. Do you think that at the moment the kind of positions Russia is taking it nationally as a part of BRICS and otherwise is much better than what it was earlier? Uh, for sure, I think that today Russia is trying to react appro appropriately to the developments of the international situation. And this is not only in the interest of the Russian Federation, but this is in the interest of the peace stability in the world. Uh, in my opinion, it's uh, very important that today when we are speaking about the BRICS, this is a clear-cut reflection that uh, non-governmental society, civil society and the political leadership and political parties are trying at least to intercommunicate and to find the answers for the common problems. And this is, uh, I think, a, a sign of a new international politics. Geopolitically, United States, after the fall of the Soviet Union and the socialist bloc of countries, has been dominating the scene. And we saw for a long time no resistance to the kind of policies the U.S. was doing. Recently, starting with Syria, we find that there is some resistance. But do you think that a similar resistance could have been done at the time of Libya? I think that this resistance appeared earlier. The, the, the only problem was that the uh, understanding within the, uh, within the movements, uh, non-governmental movements, and, the governmental and, and at the governmental level came a bit later. Because still uh, the world was uh, under the influence of the uh, conviction that after the uh, dissolution of the Soviet Union, after the disappearance uh, but I wouldn't say the end, but disappearance of the elements of the Cold War, everybody was expecting that it will be much more easier to uh, reach agreement on the uh, acute issues of international uh, situation. But as you are saying, the uh, United States, they uh, tried to create a unipolar uh, world uh, in order to achieve uh, their own interest and they continue to behave in the spirit of the Cold War and it created the opposition in the minds first of the people and now we see also a certain opposition in the action. There, the US attempt in particularly in the, what would be called Central Asia is to try and detach Ru Russia from its erstwhile allies in, the, in Central Asia. The, set of events have taken place, but most of it seems to be geared to basically trying to detach Russia from its uh, hinterland or, or its nearby states. The, Ukraine is of course a part of it, but so is also uh, other, other countries in, in Central Asia. Do you think that Russia is now trying to uh, stabilize some of these relationships? Yeah, I think that uh, uh, for, uh, for Russia it's very important to stabilize this relationship uh, uh, and to come back to the uh, areas which are natural for their uh, geopolitical developments. And I think that uh, Asia in, uh, in this situation is playing more and more important role for Russia because uh, this is the uh, emergent region the region which uh, shows a new dynamics and from this point of view it's very important that uh, the opportunities for the communication, for the dialogue, for the exchange uh, not only on the political issue but, uh, issues but also on the development of intercultural relations, uh, it's very important. And Russia is trying to do this and it's elaborate its new approaches towards uh, this cooperation and we see that uh, there is a re-establishment of certain uh, political institutions which were uh, aimed at development of this cooperation. Uh, this is like the uh, uh, Agency for the International Cooperation which it now uh, reappeared in, uh, in Russian Federation. And also we see a certain, let's say, interest of the state in development of the 
civil society contacts and the cooperation, uh, especially in this area, and uh, particularly with the countries which uh, are Asian part of the BRICS. This is India, this is China, and uh, we see that uh, there are opportunities for improving these developments. Uzbekistan recently seems to have moved away from Russia and is trying to build relationship with the United States, particularly given the fact that Uzbekistan is important for Americans' intervention in uh, Afghanistan. Uh, do you think this is again a part of the United States' expansionist policies in this region? Oh, I think that this is uh, a very specific element of the, uh, let's say, development on the post-Soviet space. And this is a uh, combination of the uh, personal uh, approaches toward the development of the international politics and the reflection on the uh, international developments. And here you are absolutely correctly speaking about the situation around Afghanistan, which is, uh, in my opinion, is a key element which uh, develops the political uh, uh, behavior in this situation. Of course, uh, United States, they I, uh, they uh, tried to use the benefits which they got from the uh, possibility to uh, move into Afghanistan. But the question is not of, uh, let's say, moving in and to create a strategic uh, basis there. Uh, the, uh, the main problem is how to stabilize this part of the world. And uh, from this point of view, of course, Americans uh, being not completely sure that they are able to achieve uh, those results which they put in front of them in Afghanistan, they are looking for the uh, regional opportunities to fix themselves in this region. And from this point of view, of course, the, the fact that Uzbekistan's uh, withdrawal from the uh, CSTO, uh, uh, this is the uh, fact which proves that the political uh, enforcement is uh, present in this region. But at the same time, I think that this is not for the interest of uh, Uzbekistan and Central Asia if they are looking into the uh, global future of developments in this region. And at the same time, I think that internal developments, developments in the United States, they also uh, are moving in the direction which is not make uh, absolutely predictable and, and sure policy of the United States in this region. I think that we will see a lot of interesting developments here. The other interest that comes up is the issue of gas and oil and the fact that a lot of the Central Asian gas and oil go really through Russia and the United States would like to bypass Russia in this transit of gas and oil to Europe. Building of the Tbilisi, pipe, Baku Tbilisi pipeline and the Sehan pipeline and various other projects that they are talking of is all meant to bypass Russia as a uh, transit for gas and oil from the region. Do you think that this is going to succeed or do you think that this is right now not succeeding? Well, I think that uh, here uh, works mainly uh, economic uh, regula regulators for development of these in infrastructures because uh, you cannot uh, construct a gas pipeline through Himalaya. It's, it's obvious. And I think that some of the inventions of the Americans were exactly to create something which uh, intend to bypass Russia. but uh, economically it's not beneficial and we see the problem of this Nabucco gas pipeline which doesn't work at all and I think that uh, here the countries they should think about the uh, energy, ener uh, sec uh, energy security in the world but not on the uh, question of the uh, geopolitical uh, fight between uh, uh, the United States and the other countries. Uh, of course, I think that uh, here also the Europeans, they should think over what is going on with this uh, uh, energy situation because uh, you see all these struggles on bypassing, this is mainly, uh, let's say, uh, uh, has the influence on the European stability and the European economic development because the Americans, they are not part of this, uh, let's say, energy uh, consumption. And uh, here I think that uh, the Russia is elaborating the policy which is uh, aimed at increasing of cooperation between the different uh, in investors into development of the energy security in the world. And clearly that uh, it should be, uh, um, let's say, um, it should be done in such a way that 
anyhow, the national control on the uh, resources of the gas and the oil, always it's a more stable element than the intention to create, uh, let's say, virtual international cooperation which, does, which doesn't bring the profit for the people uh, who are using the energy. On the issue of Iran, Russia could play a much more aggressive role to try and solve the problem. And without Russia's help, the United States really cannot uh, put the kind of sanctions it has on Iran. Now, Iran has a right to reprocess fuel. That's a right given to it under NPT. The kind of sanctions we are seeing are really, in that sense, not com you know, in consonance with the NPT. And particularly given the fact that the nuclear weapon states have not disarmed. Therefore, their moral right to ask others not to do certain set of things seems to be very limited. Don't you think Russia is actually allowing the United States to isolate Iran and creating a dangerous situation for the whole world? No, I think that the situation around Iran is uh, really quite uh, difficult. In my opinion, the, the, the issue should be uh, let's say split it in two parts. The one, I think, this is exactly what we were speaking before, this is the security uh, on the energy resources. And, uh, and Iran is thinking mainly about this issue. Uh, definitely, uh, there are a lot of let's say, predictions that oil and gas, it will be not the only one uh, source of energy. And uh, uh, thinking uh, for the future, the Iranians, they also uh, create some, uh, let's say, uh, secure spaces for the development of the uh, energy supply in the country and in the region. This is one thing. And the second thing, this is nuclear non-proliferation, which is more broad issue. And this is not issue of Iran only. We knew the situation that we have five official nuclear mem members uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the nuclear club. And we have the uh, examples and the uh, situations when there is also other who possess this uh, nuclear weapon. And here should be the, uh, a, a, um, let's say, a, an, a work of the international community on the implementation of nuclear non-proliferation. But nuclear non-proliferation cannot be without an international security and stability. And that's why when we are speaking to, to, uh, during these two days in this conference of uh, peace movements of the BRICS countries, we also touched on the question of the collective security issues. And uh, if uh, these collective security issues would not be understood uh, not only by the people in the region who are really looking for the opportunities to solve this issue, but also for the Americans, uh, because this security is also vitally important for the United States, which has their own internal problems in the, in, in the developments. I think that uh, in, uh, without this, the question will not be solved. Uh, and I think that anyhow, the issue of the uh, nuclear uh, proliferation should not influence the development of the ener energy security and the development of the science and technologies, because uh, it is interrelated. We are living in the world when we need a new technologies, we, knew, uh, we need a new, let's say, innovations in this field. Uh, the uh, problem of the uh, security of the uh, people, they are directly linked with the energy. And from this point of view, I think that international cooperation also should be developed. And, and in my opinion, the uh, activities of the BRICS countries also can contribute substantially to improving of this situation in, in the region. And this is not only the issue for Russia, this is issue also for other countries who are uh, closely linked with this problem. Do you think that the BRICS countries should take a much more strong initiative on the question of Iran and try and resolve the issue? Uh, I think that, uh, yes, they have, at least they have the potential to do it. And I think that the countries who are within the BRICS, they uh, have their own experience and have their authority and even sometimes right to speak. For example, we all knew that uh, uh, South Africa has its own nuclear program and they made quite a substantial progress in this direction and finally they stopped it and uh, give up uh, the development of the, uh, their own nuclear program. The same in you that the Brazil it was involved in, the, in these problems and it means that they have experience and they have the vision of this problem and from this point of view maybe uh, exactly BRICS can be much more uh, let's say uh, comprehensive uh, uh, institution for solution of this problem than the 
uh, quite, uh, st uh, let's say, uh, tough and unflexible uh, uh, um, policy of the United States. Last question. Nuclear non-proliferation is not the only issue. The real issue is nuclear disarmament. And on that, we really have not seen any movement. Do you think that there is a, time has come to put back the issue of nuclear disarmament on the global agenda? I think that the nuclear disarmament is permanent on the global agenda since uh, the appearance of the peace movement in this world in, in the uh, late 40s. Uh, so our organization is working for this issue from 1949 when it was created. Uh, but I think that uh, nuclear disarmament is completely built in into the infrastructure of today's world and into the, uh, let's say, security system of this world. And uh, the problem is not only in the nuclear arms as it is, and we see that today uh, uh, the threat of the nuclear war is much more, less than it was in the 50s and the 60s, uh, because people have understood the danger of these uh, weapons. But at the same time, it is interrelated with the development of the military powers uh, and the milita and new military uh, policies and new weapons of mass destruction, which are not linked with the nuclear energy, they are of completely other, uh, let's say, origin. And from this point of view, I think that if we want to get a real nuclear disarmament, it means that we first put uh, the issue of disarmament as it is, including nuclear disarmament. So you think that basically it's linked to the question of security and the question of disarmament per se, and it's not nuclear disarmament alone? Yeah. In my opinion, it's like this. Thank you very much, Victor. Hope that we'll not wait 28 years to see you again in <laughs> India. Thank you.